What's good, y'all? This week, I have the honor of representing Pat Cowan. He played quarterback here in the early 2000s. I actually had the cool opportunity of talking to him yesterday over the phone. We talked about his playing career here. Uh, he chose UCLA because his brother was here. He fell in love with football at a young age, and his brother was here balling, and UCLA offered him two weeks before signing day. So he came here as a quarterback. He was sixth string, eventually worked his way up, and uh, after Olsen got hurt in the 2006 season, uh, UCLA, led by Cowan, beat USC, who was ranked number two at the time. And that was sort of the highlight of his playing career here at UCLA. He really wanted to talk about the importance of appreciating this moment. And it's something that really drives me every day. Uh, y'all know I want to be playing out there on Saturdays, but if I'm playing against the defense every single day, like I'm gonna give y'all my best look. Uh, I love this game, I love this school. It's a special place, and Pat felt the same way about UCLA. All right, so this week I had the honor to talk to Chris Horton. Uh, he uh, was born in Los Angeles and he later moved to the South where he went to high school down there at De La Salle. Uh, at De La Salle, he was a All-American, All-District, All-Conference -co all player there too. Uh, he ended up playing safety at UCLA. He, he switched from corner to safety here his first year. Uh, his breakout season was his senior year in 2006 where uh, he had 95 tackles, three interceptions and two forced fumbles. Uh, he was later on named in 2007 to the All-American First Team. Uh, he went on to be drafted in the seventh round by the Washington Redskins, which is now the Washington Commanders. He will later on go to coach for the Baltimore Ravens, where he's currently the special teams court coordinator there. Today, I had the honor of wearing number 33, representing Derek Coleman. And one of the biggest things about him before his football stats, he became deaf at the age of three. But he didn't let that stop him from achieving his dreams and reaching for going to the NFL. And his character was shaped by what his parents told him as a kid. They said, we understand you have a problem, but everyone in this world has a problem. So what can we do to help you overcome yours and still succeed? He played here at UCLA from 2008 to 2011 as a running back and a special teamer. He won the Troy Pro Throw Award for uh, Outstanding Special Teamer and the Paul Wellman All Around Excellence Award by, voted by coaches. His senior year, he had 765 rushing yards, which was second on the team, and led the team in touchdowns with 11 touchdowns. Afterwards, he went to the league. He went undrafted in 2012, but kept pushing and was signed by the Vikings, which then made him the first ever legally deaf offensive player in the NFL history. So that was a big award for him from what his parents said he was able to do that. He played in the league from 2012 to 2018 with the Vikings, Seahawks, Cardinals, and Falcons. He went to the Super Bowl in 2014 with the Seahawks and won, and he was voted for the uh, All-Star Bowl of 2015. From 2018, once he was done in 2023, he searched other business stuff outside of football, but he missed it so much, he came back to the Green Bay Packers and is now helping with player engagement. And he said it's the perfect job for him because he's back with the football team. And he's able to help people be what he always wanted to be and ended up doing. Uh, I was blessed the opportunity to talk to Mr. Oscar Edwards, nicknamed Dr. Death, uh, born in Central Long Beach. Um, then he moved to the IE. But when I spoke to him on the phone yesterday, he didn't want me to really focus on his accolades, but he wanted to really talk about kind of what led him into his future, the mindset that he has. He lives by a method called the ATS method, the A in answering the call. He told me in Matthew 11:12 12, it says that the violent take it by force. And that, when he says, it's not just a call to action, but a choice and a reminder. It's a choice that in the face of opposition, we choose to relentlessly pursue the challenge ahead of us. It's a reminder and like I say, a reminder of who we represent on the names of our back of our jerseys, the legacies that we choose to leave behind, and our decisions, our daily lives, and the opportunities that we have right now, just in this practice itself. The togetherness, the togetherness and accepting the call is a decision that outside circumstances will no longer affect the path of our execution that we take. The S, and seizing the opportunity in which the preparation and execution based off that preparation is a blessing and the energy that we put out onto that field.